beta blocker overdose is serious, a real emergency. Absolutely life-threatening. We're looking at glucagon today, how it can potentially help. Yes, it's a key agent we consider. It has a unique way of working in this specific situation. So how does it actually work? What's the mechanism inside the heart? Well, it targets cardiac glucagon receptors directly. Okay, specific glucagon receptors. Exactly. And this is crucial because in this overdose, the beta-1 adrenergic receptors are blocked. Glucagon essentially finds another door in. It bypasses them. Makes sense. So what happens then at the cellular level? Uh, it activates GS proteins. Think of them like messengers or switches. Switches, okay. Yeah, turning things on. This activation boosts an enzyme called adenylcyclase. Yeah, adenylcyclase. Okay. And that increases the levels of intracellular cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP, that's the important molecule here. It's a key secondary messenger, yes. Mm -hmm. This rise in cyclic AMP leads to the desired effects. Which are, what do we actually see the heart doing differently? Two main things. First, enhanced heart muscle contractility that's positive in entropy. The heart squeezes harder. Stronger pump. Precisely. And second, an increased heart rate positive chronotropy. It beats faster. Okay, so harder and faster, basically helping the heart overcome the beta blockade. That's the idea. It allows the heart to function better despite the beta blockers being on board. Now, you said the idea. Does it always work like that? Is glucagon a reliable antidote? Ah, that's a critical point. No, it's definitely not guaranteed. Right. Effectiveness really varies patient to patient. You have to use it with realistic expectations. It's not a magic bullet here. So what's the evidence look like then? How solid is the support for using it? Well, a lot of what we know comes from case reports and uh, animal studies. Not large human trials. Large-scale human studies, specifically on overdosers, are lacking. It's difficult to conduct those ethically and practically. Understandable. What do the existing reports show? They often show improvements, things like heart rate and cardiac output picking up. Some retrospective reviews suggest you might get temporary improvements. Temporary. Yes, temporary. But... And this is important. Glucagon hasn't been consistently shown to improve overall survival or long-term outcomes. Mm. Okay. So potential short-term benefit, but maybe not changing the big picture alone. What about downsides? Practical issues? Oh, there are definitely challenges. Nausea and vomiting are really common side effects. Very common. Right. I've heard that. That can be significant. It can be. Yeah. Also, glucagon has a short half-life. It doesn't stick around long. Meaning? Meaning you usually can't just give one shot. It often necessitates a continuous infusion to maintain the effect. An infusion. Oh. Okay, that adds complexity. It does. And then there's the cost. Glucagon can be quite expensive. Mm -hmm. Another factor. And preparation. It typically comes as a powder in vials. So it needs reconstitution. You have to mix it. Exactly. You need to reconstitute it with the diluent before you can administer it. It takes time, needs care. What if the patient isn't otherwise healthy, say, underlying heart failure? That's another consideration. Its effectiveness might be reduced in patients with, say, severe heart failure or perhaps glycogen depletion. You might need higher doses in those cases. Higher doses. Okay, let's talk administration then. How do you actually give it? Standard approach starts with an initial IV bolus, typically one to five milligrams. One to five milligrams for TD over how long? Usually given over about 10 minutes. You don't want to slam it in too fast. Okay, 10 minutes for the bolus. Then what? Then you follow up with a continuous intravenous infusion. The infusion we mentioned. What rate? Generally in the range of 2 to 5 milligrams per hour. 2 to 5 milligrams per hour. And you adjust that. Yes, absolutely. You titrate the dose based on the patient's response, looking at heart rate, blood pressure. And managing those side effects. The nausea, the vomiting. Definitely need to anticipate that. Prophylactic antimetic medications are often recommended give them beforehand if possible, or treat aggressively if it occurs. So is glucagon the main therapy then, or part of a bigger picture? Oh, absolutely part of a bigger picture. Yeah. It should never be used as the sole treatment. Right. Not standalone. No way. Mm. It's an adjunctive therapy. You need to use it alongside other standard supportive treatments. Full stop. Like, wh what else are we typically doing? Standard advanced cardiac life support measures, huh? obviously. But also consider things like high-dose insulin with glucose euglycemic therapy. That's another important one. Right, the HIE therapy. Exactly. And vasopressors mm -hmm. if blood pressure is still low. And sometimes cardiac pacing might be necessary if the bradycardia is profound or refractory. So a multi-pronged approach. When do you decide to bring glucagon into that mix? What about timing? Early use is generally recommended. How early? Well, consider it particularly when you have 
significant bradycardia, a very slow heart rate, mm -hmm. or if the patient is in shock, that's not responding to your initial fluid resuscitation and maybe vasopressors. So if the first steps aren't working, think glucagon sooner rather than later. Yes. Early administration is thought to be key for getting the best potential effect from it. Don't wait until everything else has failed completely. Okay, so you've given the bolus, started the infusion. What are you watching for? How do you monitor? Continuous monitoring is essential. Heart rate and blood pressure are primary accordance. You're looking for improvement. Checking if it's working. Exactly. But you also need to watch closely for those side effects we talked about, especially nausea and vomiting. Keep the antiemetics handy. Yeah, definitely. And monitor electrolytes. Glucagon can affect potassium and glucose levels, so keep an eye on blood potassium and blood sugar. Okay, good points. So wrapping this up a bit, glucagon works differently, bypasses the beta blockade. That's its unique advantage here, a different pathway to stimulate the heart. But we need to be really clear about its limits. It's not a cure-all. Absolutely. Know the limitations, know the side effects, and remember it's just one piece of comprehensive care. Still, using it early, using it correctly, it can be a really valuable tool in these tough situations. It can be. When used appropriately as part of that broader strategy, yes, it offers a potential benefit. Which means we need to stay updated, keep refining how we approach this. Continuous learning, making sure protocols reflect the best available understanding. That's how we optimize care for patients with beta blocker overdose.